Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to implement async await in JavaScript. Specifically, we'll be using the fetch API to make HTTP requests. Let's start by creating an async function. I'll call it fetch data. This function will encapsulate our fetch operation. Inside the function, the first thing we'll do is set up our tried catch block to handle potential errors gracefully. Within the try block, we'll make our fetch call. We'll use the await keyword before fetch, which is crucial for async await. This pauses execution until the promise returned by fetch resolves. I'm going to fetch data from JSON placeholder API. This is a public API that's great for testing. Now that we have the response stored in the response variable, we need to extract the data. We'll use the JSON method on the response, and again, we'll precede it with await since JSON also returns a promise. We'll store the resulting JSON data in a variable called data. Let's log the fetch data to the console using console.log data. Now in the catch block, we'll handle any errors. If the fetch operation fails for any reason, the code inside the catch block will execute. We'll simply log the error to the console for now. Finally, outside the function, we'll call our fetch data function to kick off the process. Now let's switch over to the browser console. As you can see, we've successfully fetched and logged the data from the API. Here's the object containing user ID, ID, title, and body. Let's remove await keyword before the fetch API. Now we will log the response without waiting for the fetch operation to finish. As we can see from the console, a promise is printed in the pending state. This pending state is what await handles for us. Without await, we'd be working directly with the promise, which wouldn't give us the actual data. Now that the request is complete, the response object includes useful information like the status code, which is 200, okay, in this case. Same will happen if we directly log response JSON to the console. This is because JSON also returns a promise. The key takeaway here is the use of await. It makes asynchronous code look and behave a bit more like synchronous code, which makes it easier to read and reason about. And don't forget to use JSON to parse the response if you're expecting JSON data. So that's a basic overview of how to use async await with the fetch API in JavaScript. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more coding tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.